Well, good morning from Chase Family Church Studios. Uh, We're coming to you live this morning from Shirley Road in Enfield, and uh, we're doing Church at Home with you today, and uh, we're looking forward to having a wonderful time. This lockdown has meant that we are doing meetings like this, and so we are uh, coming to you from uh, Facebook Live, and we hope you enjoy your time with us this morning, particularly if you're visiting us for the first time today. Please, sir. Accept our welcome and uh, pray that you enjoy your time with us today. We want to encourage the church this morning as we worship together, as we um, pray, and as we hear some preaching a little bit length uh, later on. We're also this morning going to have a special opportunity to uh, to watch a a clip which will make you laugh, I'm sure. It's going to be something quite different. And then later, as I said, we'll have a message from Phil Kingham, and I can say some more about that later. After the service this morning, we have a meeting to uh, discuss the message and time to pray for one another, and that's a Zoom meeting. I will get the details up for you a little bit later, but just um, here are the details now if you've got a pen. The meeting ID will be 356-342-403, and the password for that is 022 Double nine eight. So this morning we want to have a time of focusing on our Lord Jesus Christ and a time to worship. And so as we start out this morning, let's pray. Let's just focus our eyes on the King of Kings, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we want to thank you that we have been given eternal life through the death and resurrection of our Son, Jesus, your Son, Jesus Christ who is our Lord and Savior. And for those of us who have decided to follow him and make him Lord of our lives, we have that promise. But today in these uncertain times, we want to come to the throne room and offer praise and adoration. So we invite you, Holy Spirit, to come into every house that has this service this morning. Whether they're drinking coffee, whether they're sat in their pajamas or They have the family round the screen right now. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to move into each house and that the presence of God will be with them. Lord, be with us this morning as we worship and as we pray and as we lift up the name of of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. You know, the Bible says this is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And so we're going to have some worship now. <clears throat> from Michael, and the first song is uh, over to him. Okay, as we worship, I just want to encourage you to take a moment just to wonder at how amazing and deserving of praise God is. You know, Easter Sunday, Christians around the world were celebrating, united in celebrating the death and resurrection of Jesus. But also, the first and greatest command is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and to do that with all your strength. So I don't know what your worship is going to look like where you are. But uh, the other thing is that, you know, when the heart, soul, and mind are fixed on God, then the body kind of follows. And the amazing thing about God is that, you know, when we worship him, It's like an offering, but also he's kind of sort of configured us in such a way that he knows our needs and he takes care of our needs. He looks after us at a time like this, you know, always we we, we need that. And so I want to encourage you not just to be spectators, but to be participators as we worship. And you might want to close your eyes, focus on the cross or even on an empty tomb and a rising sun. But where we're gathered, in the different places and spaces, we're going to welcome him, and we're going to worship him, because he so deserves it. God, you're worthy. You deserve our praise, and we love you. You're amazing, God, which is so awesome. And we worship you. Let's sing, let our praise. Let our praise be your welcome. Let our 
songs be a sign we are here for you we are here for you let your breath come from heaven fill our hearts with your life we are here for you we are here for you hearts are open, nothing here is hidden, you are our one desire, you alone are holy, only you are worthy, God let your fire fall down, let our shout, let our shout be your anthem, your renown, fill the skies, we are here for you. We are here for you. Let your word move in power. Let what's dead come to life. We are here for you. We are here for you. To our hearts. To you our hearts are open. Nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. are open, nothing here is hidden, you are our one desire, you alone are holy, only you are worthy, God let your fire fall down, we welcome you with praise, we welcome you with praise, almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. Let every heart adore. Let every soul awake. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, we welcome you with praise. Be welcomed in this place. Be enthroned upon our praise. You're worthy of our praise. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, we welcome in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. Let every heart adore. Let every soul away. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. To you our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy. God bless your father. Michael for leading us and starting the service uh, so wonderfully with worship. We'll come back to that shortly in just a moment, but at the moment we're going to uh, just for the moment read a few scriptures and uh, Claire's going to start off. We've been making it part of our Sunday uh, morning to read Psalm 91 and, and this week I had a couple of people who said how much they appreciate it and it's encouraging them, encouraging them to learn it off by heart. 
And so as Claire goes through this, um, if you want to read it along, um, that would be wonderful. Claire, it's over to you. Psalm 91. Those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We will say of the Lord, he is our refuge and our fortress, our God in him we will trust. Surely he shall deliver us from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover us with his feathers and under his wings we shall take refuge. His trust shall be our shield and buckler. We shall not be afraid of the terrors by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in dark nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at our side and ten thousand at our right, right hand, but it shall not come near us. Only with our eyes shall we look and see the reward of the wicked, because we have made the Lord who is our refuge, even the Most High, our dwelling place. No evil shall befall us, nor shall any plague come near our dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways. In their hands they shall bear us up, lest we dash our feet against a stone. We shall tread under the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent we shall trample underfoot, because we have set our love upon him, therefore he will deliver us. He will set us on high because we have known his name. We shall call upon him and he will answer us. He will be with us in trouble. He will deliver and honour us. With long life he will satisf satisfy us and show us his salvation. Amen. <clears throat> Earlier this morning when I was praying, um, I felt the Lord put on my heart that there may be somebody perhaps a little down or perhaps even a little bit depressed. And so um, the Lord put on my heart Psalm 121, and uh, Rebecca's going to read that from the New Living Translation now. And I hope this encourages, if that's you this morning, then really take these words to hold to heart and hold on to them and, and uh, let them administer to your spirit. Okay, Psalm 121. I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon at night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Rebecca. And also, this morning, uh, one other thing that came to my mind, and for an individual, or it may be several of you that feel that um, it's a uh, struggle that's going on in your life, this uh, second scripture came from James chapter 4, verse 7, which is a very familiar scripture. Um, but it says, Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You know, if you um, don't resist the devil, he doesn't have to go. Um, and if you say, Oh, God, do something about this, and he doesn't have to leave. You see, resisting the devil is your responsibility based on the authority that you possess in Christ. And if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you have authority. You know, the Bible says, he that's in us is greater than he that's in the world. And I love it on the um, Freedom in Christ course where it, says, it likens Father God to a nuclear bomb and the devil to an ant. And that's how much authority you have. In Jesus, And so perhaps if you're feeling the pressure at this time, then stand up, submit to God, resist the devil, and he has to go in the name of Jesus. We're going to continue with some worship, but just before we do, I want to ask the Lord to come and continue to bless us. Father, if those scriptures this morning have touched people's souls and spirit, I pray, Lord, that you would encourage them, strengthen them, and build them up. And they will take this scripture and hold on to it and start to walk out in the freshness of your spirit, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Over to Michael now to lead us, continue to lead us in worship.
blessed assurance Jesus is mine Oh what a foretaste of glory divine There is salvation purchase of God Born of His Spirit washed in His blood this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Salvation, all is at rest. I am my Savior, I'm happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His heart. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Bow at his feet, he 
has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain, oh God. Have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. You've been faithful through every storm. Your promise is yes and amen. You will do great things. God, you do great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. You've done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. You have done great things. God, you do great things. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Michael again, and uh, family uh, Rording. I was just going to say Swiss family Rording, but uh, <laughs> perhaps that didn't quite work out. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much for that. Um, we now have something which is going to be some, um, quite uh, different. Um, for some of you may know, because Pippa has been um, sending out some things to do called Home Church Adventures, and they are um, little uh, sessions for 
little people, for the kids. And uh, they've been very, I was just having a look through it this morning when I got up, it's very um, good indeed. And some of the topics that she's been covering has been Don't Worry, Keep Praying, uh, Palm Sunday, and Jesus Super Saviour. Um, but this week it's all about trust. And just to give you a little bit of background, you are going to have a, a video of Toby and Emily. But I need to explain, in case you miss it, uh, the arms belong to Emily. And then I think that will suffice, uh, suffice for now. But it's, uh, today's topic is about trust, trusting the Lord. And so uh, we're going to have this video. Is that okay to play now, Stu? Great. Off. Pippa did say that she had to try several times to get that to work. So well done, the Kant family, for doing that one. And I hope you enjoyed that. But the word, the verse for the day is obviously from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. And uh, Toby was having to trust Emily there, which was uh, quite a dangerous thing, I can imagine. Okay, we're going to... Uh, change um, subjects now and all um, our focus is going to be on a time of prayer and so if there are any other things that you wanted to pray for this morning you know do you want you to encourage you it's maybe a bit late for this morning but our, each Sunday we want to have the opportunity to pray and respond to people when they um, send in requests um, but we're going to have a time to focus on praying for the nation and uh, for those around us so Rebecca's going to start off with prayer Dear Father God, 
I just want to thank you for you being you, Lord Jesus, and you being our strength through uh, this challenging time. Lord Jesus, and I, uh, I thank you uh, for Boris Johnson and um, restoring him to health, Lord Jesus. Um, and just for the general leaders or people who are in charge of important aspects of our country, I pray that you would provide them all with good health. And I pray that you would provide them with uh, good wisdom about how to address these situations. I can't imagine having that responsibility. Lord Jesus, it must be a huge pressure. But I pray that this wouldn't be something that um, would be too much for them, Lord Jesus, but it would be something that they can feel the weight almost being lifted off their shoulders, Lord Jesus, when they listen to the wisdom that you are implementing and you are showing in their lives, Lord Jesus. I pray that the right people who need to speak up and uh, make relevant suggestions, Lord Jesus, I pray you would give them boldness, you would give them courage to do the right thing, to say it, even if they think, did I think that or was that someone else, Lord Jesus, that was you. Lord Jesus, but they would have the boldness to step up. Lord, I pray for our, um, every every member of our church, Lord Jesus, but also not just our church, but the church that we are. We are one church. Lord, people are losing their lives, unfortunately, and that means that people in different churches are losing church members and are losing people who are important to them, Lord. Lord, we lift up those people and we lift up those families now to you. I pray that um, your overwhelming love would come upon these families. I pray that they would lean into you in a deeper way. I pray that you would give them hope when maybe they've lost their hope at this time. I pray that if they are questioning how, God, can this happen, that instead, Lord, they would turn to you. They would turn to you for comfort. Let this be a time where love is the key to everything, where love is the answer to everything and ultimately your love. Lord, let us show your love each and every day. Let us, of course, we are isolating. Most people are isolating at home, Lord Jesus. But let's not isolate us, isolate ourselves from the people around us. Let us be the church that you have called us to be. Let's go out in boldness. Let's go out with courage. And let's go out with your love. In Jesus' name. Amen. doing right now we thank you that you're with us constantly lord and i pray that our church knows that lord jesus i pray that we constantly know that you are god and you are with us through this trying time lord jesus we thank you that you bring light to the darkness in in these hard times lord jesus and we lift up every single member of our church to you right now lord for all the families where you're all together lord i pray that they'll be able to praise your name every single day lord jesus and share your love i pray this is a time where we can help others that are around us lord and um, this is such a key time where we can encourage one another lord and i pray that in um, our desperation, Lord, that we encourage one another and motivate one another to share your love, Lord. Lord, I pray that your hand will be upon all key workers at this time, Lord. Uh, they're creating such a big impact on how society is working right now, Lord. Uh, but we pray that everything will be able to be continue moving uh, in that swift way, Lord Jesus. That everything is falling uh, in the correct order, Lord. And I pray that um, your hand is over it and over every single one of those key workers that need to be working for things to Go the right way, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray for good health upon them all, Lord, and your protection every single day as they may put their lives at risk uh, for helping all of us, Lord Jesus. Lord, may your hand be upon us all <clears throat> and helping us throughout this time. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Lord, as we sit in our houses, as we are with family, or not, we might even be on our own. Lord, 
This uh, world is telling us we have to isolate ourselves, but we are not isolated from you. We're not isolated from the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so, Father, I lift up Chase Family Church to you, and I ask that you would encourage and strengthen your church today. Holy Spirit, will you move with power and authority in people's lives today, where their feelings are taking them in one direction or their emotions in another. May they be true to your word, your word which is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, says it's piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and joints and marrow and is the discerner of the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Father, let us be a church that stands on your word, is obedient to your word, and that receives the comfort of your word by your spirit. As a father, as we approach this week and we have another few weeks of lockdown, I pray that we would rise up, the church of Jesus Christ would rise up, that your authority, Lord, would be stamped on our lives and we would be the witnesses you call us to be to our neighbours and perhaps to our family too. So, Father, bless every household that is watching and being part of this today. Let your kingdom come and your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're very pleased to have um, Phil with us. Um, he recorded this earlier on in the week. His uh, title is uh, the, the Tale of Two Cities. Um, and we're looking forward to hearing Phil Kingham is the pastor of uh, New Life Church in Palmer's Green, which we planted a few years ago now and is um, growing and having a wonderful time. So it's going to be quite unique for him. He's leading the service down there this morning while his sermon is being preached here. Isn't that wonderful? It wonders of technology that we can enjoy that today. So let's sit back and uh, enjoy what he has to say to us. Good morning, Chase Family Church. I hope you're well. It's good to be with you this morning, although technically I guess I'm not. At the moment, I'm stuck here talking to a camera, but um, and by the time you get to listen to this, I'll be on Zoom with uh, New Life Church in Palmer's Green. I don't know um, <clears throat> what it's like for you guys. Uh, we seem to do everything on Zoom at the moment. We do meetings on Zoom. We do prayer meetings on Zoom. We do Bible studies on Zoom. We do leadership team meetings on Zoom. Uh, there's been all sorts of talk about conspiracy theories behind this virus, about whether it was engineered by a particular country or by MI6 or something like that. I wonder, the only people I can see making a real killing from it at the moment is Zoom. So, so I'm, I'm joking, by the way, otherwise I'll get done for slander on a Sunday morning. But anyway, <clears throat> I guess there are bits about it that are fun. Um, everything that restricts us is a challenge. And I don't know how you deal with restrictions, but re every restriction that comes on us is an opportunity to grow. And I want to talk a little bit about that this morning. Um, there was a particular um, morning right before the, the, sh the kind of the lockdown. I received an email. It actually came from a friend in Kenya. And uh, it was just a passage from Isaiah 26. Um, and verse 20, it says, Go, my people, enter your rooms and shut the doors behind you. Hide yourselves away for a little while until his wrath has passed by. And I read this and it grabbed me, um, but I suspect probably for the wrong reasons. The thing is, I quite like retreating. The idea of going into my home and shutting the door and leaving everyone else outside, it, that's quite attractive for me. Now, I know that you socialites probably are not quite like that, but I like being on my own. I like my own company, and I, I suspect it's probably easier when you have a family than it is when you're on your own. But um, when I read it, what it did for me is it made me look at the rest of Isaiah 26, and that's where I want to go today. So if you've got a Bible to hand um, and you want to check that I'm reading from the right bit, I'm going to look at Isaiah 26 the first um, eight or nine verses. <clears throat> so let me read it to you. In that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. God makes salvation its walls and ramparts. Open the gates that the righteous nation may enter, the nation that keeps faith. You will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is steadfast because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord... The Lord is the rock eternal. He humbles those who dwell on high. 
He lays the lofty city low. He levels it to the ground and casts it down to the dust. Feet trample it down, the feet of the oppressed, the footsteps of the poor. The path of the righteous is level, O upright one. You make the way of the righteous smooth. Yes, Lord, walking in the way of your laws, we wait for you. Your name and renown are the desire of our hearts. My soul yearns for you in the night. In the morning, my spirit longs for you. When your judgments come upon the earth, the people of the world learn righteousness. <clears throat> now, as I read this, there's something that I noticed about it. There are all sorts of things that came up. But actually, what came up for me was, uh, was, gave me a good title. Every preacher loves a good title. So I've called this one A Tale of Two Cities. Because in this passage, there are two cities. Um, Tale of Two Cities, I think, is a book by Charles Dickens about London and Paris. But I'm not talking about London or Paris specifically today. I'm talking about two cities that appear all the way through the scripture, from Genesis, predominantly Genesis 11, all the way through to the book of Revelation. You see two cities established in scripture. And um, <clears throat> one is a city which is an unholy city. It's a city established on man's work for the glory of man. Another city is a, st is a city that is established on God's grace, on his effort, and it's for his glory. And those two, so two cities have different names as they go through the Bible. It starts with the city of Babel, or the Tower of Babel in Genesis 11, in Babylon, um, or the land of Shinar. And, um, and elsewhere in the Bible, you'll see the representation of a holy city called Jerusalem. But actually, Jerusalem, the earthly city, is not always the holy city. In fact, it's referred to often as Babylon, because they have become corrupted and turned themselves against God. So you see these two metaphorical cities in Scripture, the holy one, and the unholy one. And in this passage, you see both of them. The first one, it says, we have a strong city. God makes salvation. It's walls and ramparts. And uh, so it's a city that is established by God. But towards the end of the passage, um, towards the end of this little bit, it says in verse 5, he humbles those who dwell on high. He lays the lofty city low. He levels it to the ground and casts it down to the dust. So there's another city here which is a city based on man's glory. Now, I have a question for you guys this morning you might want to think about. Which city do you live in? If there's a city that is a righteous city and there's a city which is an unholy city, one which is based on man's glory and the first is based on God's glory, which city is it that you actually live in? Where do you live? And a standard Christian answer probably uh, would be, well, I live in the city, uh, I live in God's house, I live in his way, my, my righteousness is not based on my efforts, it's based on God's efforts. Um, but I'd like to suggest to you this morning that every Christian that I know doesn't just live in one city, but they live in both. That their roots are in one city, but their branches are in another. We live in London. We live in this city. If I was to say to you that this city was founded for the glory of God and was, was obsessed with the glory of God, you'd probably laugh at me because we know that that's not the truth. We know that's not what drives or governs our finances. So we live in a proud city. What happens to it happens to us. If there's a war, it affects us. It suffers, we suffer. If it prospers financially, at least in the flesh, we prosper too. When it is locked down, we get locked down. Whatever happens to the city that we live in affects us. But I would like to suggest to you that a Christian doesn't have his roots in the city that he lives in. See, there's another passage that talks about cities, about the, specifically this city. In Psalm 46, 4, it says this, There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the most high dwells. So there's not only a city, but the city that is established by God is a city with a river. Now, most of the world's cities are cities built on rivers for various reasons. But the city of Jerusalem didn't have a river. But in the, in the, the prophecies and the, the pictures of Mount Zion, there was always a river running through the city. There is, a city whose, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. When Ezekiel talks in 47, it says, Fruit trees of all kinds grow on the both branks of that river. 
Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear, because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Psalm 1 says this, he is like a tree when he's talking about a righteous man. Psalm 1-3, he says, He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Now, I want you to imagine for a moment a picture of a tree. With a standard tree, let's say an oak tree, because we're English for the moment, that a good English oak has pretty much as many roots below ground as it does above. But it lives in two different arenas. One is above ground and the other is, un is underground. One is seen and the other is unseen. And where we were born into Christ, when we were born again, if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus, you've been born again. You've been rooted into the righteousness of God. You've been rooted into what God has done rather than what man has done. So your roots go down into him. Ephesians 3 says we are rooted and established in love. So there are two arenas that the Christian lives in. There's underground and there's above ground. And what happens to you above ground can affect you. But actually predominantly it's what goes on underground that controls your life. Now lots of people, we're restricted at the moment. Stuff is happening to us and, uh, and we can't control it. It's actually an interesting uh, notion that the cities of the world where we like to say to ourselves that we're in control of everything, we can control our media, we can control uh, all sorts of things, suddenly we're running terrified of something we can't see. Because this virus is affecting everybody. And so we're in lockdown. We're restricted. I'm preaching to a camera rather than a room load of people. This will probably, if Stuart's got any common sense, be edited. But it is what it is. We are restricted. Now, some years ago, I, I had uh, a conversation with a friend of mine. He's a good friend, and he was, got into this new hobby, and it was growing bonsai trees. I don't know if you know anything about bonsai tree, but a bonsai tree is just a normal tree. Genetically, it's the same as a normal tree. So a bonsai oak is genetically identical to an oak tree because it's, it is an oak tree, but it has been controlled and miniaturized. And you can have a 50-year-old oak tree, which is about this high. And everything's miniature about it. The leaves are miniature, the acorns miniature, the curvature of the trunk is twisted. It looks like just a tiny oak tree. Absolutely beautiful, some of them are, if you get to look at them online. Now, um, I had, along with every child of my generation, watched the movie Karate Kid. And in that, you saw Mr. Miyagi trimming his bonsai trees. He had a whole load of them in his workshop. And he was trimming them and cutting the leaves. And I thought that I knew that the way that bonsai trees were miniaturized was by continually trimming them and cutting their leaves and cutting their branches to make them small. But Steve told me that that's actually not the case. That a bonsai tree is not controlled in its size by what anyone does to the branches. It's actually controlled by something else. And it comes from the name that bonsai means. It actually means tree in a shallow pan. You see, what controls a bonsai tree is not what you do to its branches at all, but what you do to its roots. And every bonsai tree is in a very shallow dish, and its roots are carefully trimmed so that the roots cannot develop, and that miniaturizes the tree itself. You see, friends, the truth is that it's not our branches or what people do to the outside of us or the restrictions that people place on us that actually truly limits our fruitfulness. It's what they do to our roots. And a, a Christian is someone, no matter where he or she waves her branches or his branches and bears his or her fruit, that their roots are rooted down into a city whose architect is from above. You see, we're established in the righteousness of Christ. And although we may be limited, the test of where we are truly rooted will be how much we continue to bear fruit. 
That's why I think the writer of this passage in Isaiah, well, Isaiah himself, at the end, he says, Go, my people, enter your rooms and shut the doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a while until his wrath has passed. You see, there is a time for us to retreat and to put time and effort into our roots. We live in London. We might live in a big house or a small house. We might be isolated. Well, we're all isolated, but we might be less or more so. But our roots are somewhere else. You see, Isaiah is speaking in the original of this passage. He's speaking to Israel. He's speaking to the nation of Israel. He's saying, Israel, we have put our trust in our own righteousness. We should have been fruitful in the world, but we were not. And he says this stuff that... Um, I guess this, this bit might well get edited out. But he says, we were about to give birth and we just farted. We were about, we were supposed to give birth to righteousness in the world. And in the end, we just passed wind. Because our roots were not down in the righteousness of God. They were in human effort. We have an opportunity during this time to develop our roots as a church, to put down our roots deeper, and to make sure that we are rooted in the right city, to draw water from the stream, the river that flows from God himself, from the Holy Spirit. Everyone has that opportunity. One of the things that we're trying to do as a family, and um, we probably should have been trying to do this a long time, or, or actually doing it a long time ago, but being together as a family means that we've decided in the morning we get up, whatever there is to do during the day, we get up, we sit together, we open the scripture together, a different member of the family reads uh, something and leads us in a time of devotion, and we pray for the day, and we say, Lord, we want you to be at the core of everything we do today. We want our roots to go down deep into you. So when, the, the, um, when Isaiah writes here and says, go into your home and shut the door, He's actually asking us for a moment to go inwards and reevaluate where our righteousness lies. We can't really do much above the ground as a church at the moment. Actually, we're, we're doing a little in Palmer's Green. We're still doing our homeless feeding program. It's got a lot busier because um, people are a lot hungrier at the moment. But actually, that's about all we can do. Everything else, we either do online or we do in here, in our hearts. We can't do much above ground, but we can invest below ground. Now, I don't know if, um, if, if this is right. I'm sure that Tony Ingle will correct me if I'm wrong. But when it comes to sailing boats, most of what really matters about a sailing boat is not what you see, it's what's under the waterline. If you invest in what's below the waterline, then you get a boat that no matter how good it looks will sail relatively well. All of the decking and all of the polished brass is slightly irrelevant. It's actually what's below the waterline that counts. And the same is true of us. If our roots are good, if we truly are rooted in the city of God, in the New Jerusalem, in Zion, then our roots will go down streams of living water and we will continue to bear fruit no matter what happens. No matter what the pressure comes on, we will continue to be a fruitful people. Years ago, I had a dream. Um, it was a strange dream, and I woke up with a start because it was about cabbages. Now, I don't normally dream about cabbages, but in this dream, I was standing. Um, it, it looked like in a, a big field in, let's say, Kent, you know, the Garden of England, I think it's called. Um, and uh, there's beautiful rolling English hills, and there were these fields that were so bright green, absolutely stunning. And I, I looked at them, and they were fields of cabbages. And there was a guy standing to my right, and, um, and I said to him, these look so amazing, you know, this is so healthy. And he said, watch this. And he blew, and this wind came out of nowhere and swept across this field, and these cabbages just rolled away. In fact, um, by the time the wind had blown, there was probably only about a third of them left. All of the others had just rolled down the hill. It's as they rolled, it became apparent that they didn't have any roots. Only those that were rooted remained. Times of testing, times of trial must come in this world. Jesus warned us of that. 
We have to invest in our roots. We have to dig deeper. We have to go down and learn in these times to drink from him. Because it doesn't matter what people do to your foliage or to your branches, that will not define you. It's what you put into your roots that defines whether you continue to grow. It's been good to be with you this morning. Um, I hope this has been a helpful thought for the day. Um, hopefully, I'll see you again in person soon and we'll, uh, we'll spend some time in fellowship together. But until then, keep praying for us. Uh, we're going through the same stuff that you are. We're working through the same issues. But God is the same God. And we're not controlled by what the world does to us. We are actually controlled by our fellowship and our relationship with him. Nice to be with you. What a great message we have from Phil uh, this morning. Um, we're going to have a chance to respond to that by worshipping now as uh, Michael is going to lead us in uh, raise a hallelujah. So let's uh, declare together where you are in your lounge or in your, uh, around your dining room table, I don't know, wherever you are, let's raise a hallelujah. Let's lift the name of Jesus high as we worship now. In the presence of my enemies, I raise a hallelujah, louder than the unbelief, I raise a hallelujah, my weapon is a melody, I raise a hallelujah, heaven comes to fight for me. I'm going to sing in the middle of a storm, louder and louder, going to hear my praises roll, up from the ashes hope will arise, death is defeated, the king's alive, I raise a hallelujah, with everything a hallelujah I will watch the darkness flee I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery I raise a hallelujah fear you've lost your hold on me and I'm gonna sing in the middle of a storm, louder and louder, gonna hear my praises roll. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king's alive. And I'm gonna sing in the middle of a storm, louder and louder, gonna hear my praises roll. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king's alive. Sing a little louder, 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 sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemies, sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief, sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody, sing a little louder. Heaven comes to fight for me, sing a little louder. And I'm gonna sing in the middle of a storm. Louder and louder, gonna hear my praises roll. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king's alive. And I'm gonna sing 
in the middle of the storms louder and louder gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the king's alive I raise a hallelujah I raise a hallelujah I raise a hallelujah I raise a hallelujah. 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 I raise a Raise a hallelujah. I raise a It's wonderful that on a Sunday morning like this, uh, I don't know how many people out there are, but we are meeting together in our lounges, in our dining rooms, wherever we are, maybe even some of you on a place of work, I don't know, um, to praise the name of Jesus, to raise a hallelujah, a praise to our Lord and Saviour. I just want to say off the back of something that, uh, things that Phil has said this morning, that I'm not certain of all the people that are uh, watching this morning, but if there is anyone who doesn't know that the Lord Jesus Christ came and he died and rose again, and the reason he did this was to pay the price for our sin and would like to know more about it, then I have a little booklet here called Why Jesus, and I'm more than happy to post it to you if you want to send me your e uh, via email or via the church website uh, for some details and I'd be delighted to send it to you and to, if you want to talk some more by all means give us a call here at the office um, I'll review if you again if you want to email and we can respond and communicate together but if you need to respond please don't hesitate don't think oh I can't do that you know this is the Holy Spirit provoking you to say now is the time to accept the Lord as your saviour. Now, um, in ending, I just want to say a few things. We are, as you can see, uh, trying each week to get things a little better. Unfortunately, our eight-year-old um, laptop um, is struggling. Hence, we have a lot of jittering on the video. Um, but we are working on that, and hopefully in a few weeks we'll have a, a new computer. And just to say, if you would like to give to that, towards that would be great, because it's not cheap to do these things. Um, but we recognise that it's necessary, and we could be in lockdown like this for quite some time. And so we need to prepare ourselves and do the best we can. Next Sunday uh, will be a youth service, and uh, so we're going to have something slightly different. And also during the week, we I intend to have the 8 o'clock prayer meeting on Wednesday again. That's the Zoom prayer meeting at 8 o'clock. Details will go out via the website on that. As we come to the end of the service, just to say that we're going to be meeting in uh, 10 minutes. What time, Stuart, is it going to be? 11.55, Stuart tells me. Um, we'll be meeting for the Zoom meeting. Let me give you those numbers again. They will come up on the screen afterwards, but it, the meeting ID is 356-342-403, and the password is 022998. And uh, we are going to have an opportunity to answer some questions about the uh, sermon this morning, the message, and then to have some time of prayer and fellowship. be great to see you there, and that will be at uh, 11.55. God bless you, keep safe, and may he, uh, the Holy Spirit fill you with the, a newness of life as you go through this week. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you and goodbye. You can say goodbye, girls.
Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>